Hello YouTube, 609 Collector coming at you, another action figure disassembled video. This time I'm going to be taking apart a McFarlane Batman. Now I've been taking one of these apart, and this is a special McFarlane figure because I actually won this in a giveaway from another YouTube, Faithful Steve. Uh, it's a really cool figure, I love the look of it. I just have put this off, I actually just opened this. Because I've been busy, haven't had time to get around to it, I'm sure you guys know. <laughs> haven't been doing a lot of YouTube videos, but this is a great figure. So, uh, this is one that I've been holding on to. But I do want to use this one for my my AFD because I was doing McFarland Spawn, but the video was running long and I had to like pause midway through and then I just realized that I wasn't shooting in HD. That Wolverine video I did recently was only a 720 and I'm like, grrr. So, I'm going to do this one and I'm going to do this one in a full... UHD 30 frames so yeah I'm gonna take the guns out you just let me put them in and take them out one thing that happened was I had a malfunction as soon as I took this guy out of the box uh, this wrist peg broke on me but that's all right yeah it happens sometimes get my light a little bit closer so all you guys already know I got my Chinese takeout container here I'm gonna put Batman in here I'm gonna submerge the whole figure. Now this is important. Um, for anyone who hasn't seen a video before, I'm just gonna go over some quick facts. It's important to submerge the whole figure if you're gonna do a full disassemble. I like to use hot water because of course hot water can touch every part of a figure. Uh, it will just kind of soak in the whole body. Sometimes you may want to only take a part of shoulder or a foot or a leg. Uh, so you can just soak that part. I would get a teacup or maybe I would still use this, but if you're only soaking a smaller portion, then you can use uh, just a smaller container. People also use heat guns or, well, I don't recommend a heat gun. They're way too hot. A hair dryer on low or high. With that, you have better control because heat gun is a lot of heat and you will deform or melt your figure. So I do not recommend a heat gun. I had one just laying around, so I used it. Don't recommend it. Get your girl's hair dryer or take your own hair dryer or steal grandma's hair dryer. Hair dryer, maintain a distance this far away, hit it in circles, rotate your figure. You're going to heat an area gently as you go, you know, and then as, see how stiff the plastic is? As you heat figures, they will get soft and malleable and be pretty gummy. You can take them apart. Be careful on tender parts like claws. On Wolverine like this, Hasbro's a little bit better, but on Mezco, they're very um, thin and fragile. I know someone who used too much heat on one. I saw it on Facebook. He actually shoveled up and melted his claws. You don't want to do that. All right? So that's how you could do if you're going to apply heat from a hairdryer. Just maintain a distance and just add heat. Better safe than sorry. So start farther away. Test it out. Get closer. Maybe one day I'll make a video where I use a hairdryer just so people can see because some people recommend hairdryers. I just like the hot water because I can do a whole figure or um, sometimes things are warped. You'll hear guys say, oh, well, this was warped here or this was warped. I just hit it with some warm water. You go in the bathroom, the kitchen, hit it under the sink. Some warm water makes things soft enough so you can get in there and move it. And then once you get in position, you let it dry or I'll turn on the cold water and hit it with cold water. Good for figures with swords, stuff like that. Um, skinny parts like this that tend to warp in in the container but i'll throw that off to the side so batman's been in here i usually let him sit in there for a minute or however long just as long as it needs got my screwdriver these little things i didn't know what was going on i was like what do i have in my house it's this old screwdriver <laughs> just coming apart the little little nubs on there all right so let's see how this is looking this is looking okay i'm getting a little bit of a flex going on in here so i can probably start this now, since i've never done one of these before i'm going to start by taking it apart looking at this you have the toe articulation the way toe articulation is achieved you have the main foot that goes in this is pegged on the sides and there's a tiny little um pin that goes through not gonna mess with that I'm not gonna take that apart old toy biz used to rock toe articulation too um it's pretty awesome now we can see here this is the way the peg works for those of us who don't know it's just a ball peg so it's well, not a ball peg. It's a kind of a joint. Two circles, right? Brought together. Pegged here in the center. 
So one circle can go that way while the other one's going down. This is nice because it offers you a rotation and really good flex. Good way to do it. As you're taking your figure apart, organize your joints, organize what you're putting down. You can use a little flathead screwdriver. I recommend smaller ones over the bigger ones. You can probably go a little bit bigger than this, or you can use your fingernails uh, if you have fingernails. This figure, though, the McFarlands use bigger pins. They're a little bit stiffer, so you might want to be careful. And be careful when you're pulling things out. I'm not just, not just like don't force it, but literally be careful because you don't want things shooting out too much pressure in here. And when this thing pops out, it's going to go flying. And then you're going to go searching. And you may not find what you're looking for. It can be lost to you forever. The other thing, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, I'm going to recommend to you. As you take something apart, put it down in the order you take it apart. Stay organized, people. Stay safe. Because you don't want to have to put something back together. And then have it be lost. I'll move that off to the side because you know what that is. That's just hot water. That's just me taking something apart. Now, for some figures, you can get in there with your fingernails. Pop that apart. All right, left shin. There is no uh, calf articulation, so I don't have to do anything there. We're gonna stop, we're gonna take a look at the pins here. Now look at that pin. These pins, you used to see stuff like this on um, older figures like uh, Toy Biz, Marvel Legends, but I like the way McFarlane has done theirs. The center is as thick as the two ends, and it's a little bit thinner on this side, but this is a nice big pin. This is thick all the way across uh it's thicker than my screwdriver what's good about this is they're easy to take out but they're easy to put in as well thinner pins are they give you much more um much more of a hard time there's a lot more of a hassle when you're resting around resting messing around with um those thin skinny pins so i'm just gonna roll through this i'm gonna be quick because um, the longer I take to explain things, the cooler figure's gonna be. So everything's pretty much self-explanatory. You see me getting in there. Basically, I'm just prying things off of the pins and then removing the pins. Now, the thing is, the figure's gonna be very malleable. Um, so even if you're, you're, oh my God, you're stretching it, you, you're just gonna squeeze that back together. And you see how that goes? It's so simple. It's gonna get its shape back. So you can't really deform it. And if you think you have, you just put it back in your hot water. All right. So, I mean, I don't want to hear, I can't see anything. This is pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory what's going on here. You guys already know I'm getting in there and all I'm doing is separating the, um, just separating the joints enough that I can access. See what I'm talking about? Luckily, I was able to track that, but that bad boy went flying. Now here, on um, some figures, Marvel Legends have a thigh cut. All right. This is a peg here that goes down into this part of the thigh, allows articulation. Some figures don't have that cut, but they still maintain somewhat of a swivel. And the reason is because this is a peg that goes into the thigh here. Let me see if I can get in there. Now, I did this on spawn, so I'm gonna be careful and try and get in here on Batman. My puppy wants to escape. But my daughter's taking an online class, so he cannot because he's going to be a disturbance in the force. So I'm going to take that apart, put that thigh there, and then we're going to look at the, the joint here and see how this is done. Now, with some figures, let's look at, let's do a comparison here. Marvel Legends, um, NECA, some other figures. Basically, you have this, right? It's got a ball on that side, it's got a ball on that side, and it's just straight through. This is pinned in here. This is just one piece that goes across like that, and maybe another little piece that goes in, well, kind of like pins in here. It's held in securely, gives you your rotation around, uh, gives you your rotation around that ball peg. Your upper thigh swivel is given by this part. This is like two pieces of hard plastic glued together over that ball peg, right? That's just how that's done. McFarlane here, right? We'll see what we're working with. So, I haven't cracked it, but if I had to guess, I would say it looks like this here. All right. This is pegged in here. Okay. All right. And this ratchets around. 
okay? So this goes into there. This is hollow, and this part here sits over it and is pegged through with that peg. Am I gonna remove that peg? Hell no. And you can see it in here. You can see the circle disc. If we move his butt, you can kind of look in there and see it. And then that goes through there. This is a different kind of design, but it gives you that clean thigh that you see. You don't get as much rotation, but really how much can a person really rotate their upper thighs? And this is nice and sturdy. This feels like it's not gonna break. Uh, if something does break, you can see what's going on in there. So you may be able to have an idea of what broke. Um, good news is if you get spare parts, this is probably something that's repairable if you can get parts from another figure from somebody. All right, let's see. I'm gonna um, put this guy back in the water real quick. And then I'm just going to take a close look at these again. So again, uh, looking in here, this is Batman's right thigh. One thing we're going to go over with figures is idiot proofing things. Let's look here. What is that? That's an R. So this is, what is that? Oh my gosh. What is this? Dorothy Explorer. Your right thigh has an R. Something that's cool here. Your knee joint not only has an R, but it has an arrow. You can't see that we're out of focus. You have an R and you have an arrow that points up. So you don't have to worry putting his knee armor in upside down. It happens, especially with um, a knee like this that doesn't have some kind of armor on it. You're like, oops, you could easily put a figure together wrong. That's why I recommend placing your figures down in the order you took them apart, keeping them separated right side, left side. But then to make things even easier, they're labeled R, R with an up arrow. We have... No such luck here when it comes to the uh, the calf. But calves tend to be a little bit easier because you can just note the arch in calves. If you have calf muscles, calves, you can kind of tell easy. Same thing with feet. You can tell a right foot from a left foot just from the way that they're designed. All right, Batman's been in there for a little bit longer. Now I'm just going to get in there, shake him off a little bit. Now... The way I'm going to come in again is I'm just going to go down a little bit because I know where I'm shooting for. And I'm going to get leverage on there and try and pull this off of there. Now, I don't see how I'm getting a lot of that flex. I don't want to go too crazy. Look at that. His arm came off without him even asking. I don't want to get too crazy. <laughs> well, there we have it. Now we can get a really good look at what's going on. And we can see for sure what this is because I just popped the whole thing off. Pause. All right, so Batman's whole leg came off. All right, and this is actually what's going on in there. So it's a little different than I thought, actually. Okay, so it's not made that way. What's actually going on here, this is a circle that uh, actually has its own peg. And it goes through this thigh part. So let's look at them. One assembled, one kind of disassembled. All right. You have a circle here. All right. That is a circle. All right. Where is that circle? You can't see it. Bum, 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 bum. You get a peg that comes out, and this just slides onto that peg. All right, and then once that circles onto that peg, that's actually really easy to take apart. This allows you to have your out motion. So that in the leg, this allows out. And then from the inside, we are, it goes all the way through. It looks like there's a peg, and this is pegged into the side. Okay, so let's look at this joint here. This pegs into the crotch, like that. Okay, so this allows your front and back motion, and then this is a hinge here, and this hinge allows your out motion like that. You learn something new every day. Now let me see if I can put this back just like this one. And then basically, this whole piece here is one piece that just sits on here. This is a lot simpler than I thought, actually. All right, now I just want to put this back in 
how. Doesn't really matter, does it? Because it rotates. I had the, the Devastator, the year one Batman Devastator figure, and that came apart. Okay, I can see how this goes in. This goes in with your little ratchets here. Let's look at your little nubs there. Have to go down to fit into there. And that's what's going to allow for your ratchets. And that's what's going to allow for the clip. Give me one second. I'm going to pause this. I'm going to heat this up and I'm going to put it back together. All right, I'm back. What was I doing? I popped this out. I'm just going to heat that piece up for a little bit. I had to zoom out to take a picture from a thumbnail. Uh, you guys saw this fall out. While I'm waiting to heat that back up, let's move on to the arms. Now the shoulder, this is actually a really big, thick peg here with a small little nub there. So that explains why this fell out so easily. You can see there, L for the left arm. These are kind of like mushroom pegs will be when it's a thick peg and just it comes out a little bit bigger. That's all it really is that holds figures together. That little peg right there. It got hot while I was handling it, it came apart. Easy peasy. All right, I'm gonna throw that in there and I'm gonna let that get hot. And while that gets hot, so I can disassemble and show you the elbow assembly, I'm gonna show you how the shoulders put together. On the other side, this is simple. This is kind of like how you see on some Japanese um, import figures. This is done differently than a Marvel Legends butterfly joint. Right, let's get that. Marvel Legends butterfly joint, this is a separate piece of plastic you see here on Wolverine. Now it has a peg that runs up, peg that runs down, and it swivels. So the shoulder joint just pegs right in. Can I? Uh, how's this rolling in here? All right. Mm. <laughs> this shoulder joint pegs right in there, and it's only meant to give you motion like this. All right. This shoulder comes out, and it goes around. Okay. The butterfly motion. If this arm was out pull the whole shoulder out, this little yellow piece here can spin 360. And that's what allows you to come front, what allows you to go back. All right, thanks Wolverine. Now with this, this peg here goes directly into the shoulder, the shoulder joint, kind of like on uh, click and connect or build a figure pieces. It goes in like that, all right? And up, down, all the motion is coming from there. You can get your 360 degrees if the cape wasn't in the way. You can get your forward, and you can get all that rotation out of it, right? Back, forward. Also, because of the cut in there and the way it's hinged, that allows you for your up and down, all right? Now, the reason that you have this piece here, okay? The whole point of this, this just sits in there like that, and this is cut out for the shoulder. It's just to close up that gap. You know, because that compared to this. Now, you might not mind this. I really don't see that much of a difference. But from the side, look at that huge ass gap from the side of this. You know, that's to clean it up. That looks nice and pretty. Whereas this is a big old gap you can see right inside the figure versus it being closed up. Okay, so that's how that is done. Push it down, bats. I'll get back to that. Let's move on to the arms since we're taking apart joints. Now, this hand broke on me. See, let's get out of the package. Uh, it's just, I think, every now and then you get a piece that's going to be a little defective. Um, basically, the hand joints are the same as the foot joints. I'm not going to mess with it because it's barely hanging on. You can actually get replacement joints on eBay once I found a bunch of red... Uh, ball joints like that I got for a Spider-Man and it, what it did is it came in a bunch of different sizes and I just got a bunch of different pegs so you see the knee comes apart I mean the knees come apart just like the elbows you have your ridges there and your ridges in there those bumps you see you don't see because we're out of focus those bumps you see in there and these these are indents these ones are protrusions they come out that's what goes in and that's what gives you your click 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 you know you have your elbow joints, same design as your um, knees, just a little bit smaller. And the elbow's in two parts. I'm not going to take apart the bottom elbow just because the gauntlets make it harder to stick the pegs back in there. But it would come apart just like a lower knee. 
your hand, your elbow, your upper elbow, into your shoulder. As you saw over here, how your shoulder comes off. Boom. All right, so it's a shoulder. Let's get to the torso. Now, this is an interesting bit. I it's kind of a love-hate thing. I'm going to let that heat up. While that heats up, I'm just going to throw this back in here. Like we said, I had this heating so it would be a little flexible. My water's cooling off a bit. But uh, I should just be able to stick this back in here. Don't mind me. I'm all over the place. Like, gosh, where is this guy going? Find the right way to do this. There we go. Okay. The way this went in, it had a little bit of a curve to it. That curve went in the back. That sits right there. And this comes in here. So this is actually a very easy design. A lot less complicated than I thought. You just have your crotch piece. All right. Your pegs there. Your butt crack slot there. It's just meant to keep this soft rubber uh, crotch piece in there. I've seen things like this on Storm Collectibles. I like that McFarlane does it because what it does is it gives you a little bit more flexibility. Without this so much getting in the way, this can move a little bit more. All right, but then that's going to bring us to our torso. Let me put this back on here real easy like. All right, now Batman's torso doesn't want to play ball because it's not as, again, my water's not as hot as I'd like it to be. The top I can probably get in there and take off. The bottom, meh, 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 meh. Come to daddy. Yes, come to me. Come to daddy. If this were hot enough, I should just be able to pull the bottom out. The way the top is, you see this is all one molded section. This one's a little bit different from Spawn. So this is the top of the figure, right? This is all connected in there. It's one piece. I actually got Spawn over here. So you can see how Spawn is done. And this is an insert. And this looks like all one molded piece, and the peg is inserted in there. Now, I don't know. The peg doesn't seem to have any mobility, so it might just be a straight peg that goes in. So if this had, it's typically like this, but if this was a double rounded uh, barbell peg or whatever, you'd have a little bit of motion up there and down here, but you really don't need that. This being round and inserting into the round torso here is what allows you to have that circular motion. And if I can, I feel it. Come, come on. Don't fly away. Oh, I flew away. And this is your lower torso. <laughs> your, uh, your T-800 body there. Okay? So this is all one piece. And you already know it's got this peg that comes down, out. That pops in there. This snaps onto there. Very simple three-piece design for your, um, for your hips. And I actually like this because it seems really sturdy. This seems like a nice sturdy piece because it comes out here. Probably a lot harder to break. You know, and you typically don't really snap these off unless these are unless it's a translucent plastic figure. They tend to snap a lot. They suck. Um, but because this is designed like this, balling into here kind of the reverse both of these ball pegs go in there and they allow for the rotation of the figure okay that's what allows you to have that rotation at the bottom you know it'd be in there it gives you rotation at the bottom you know side to side a little bit around and a 360 as opposed to just kind of being like this completely different design but this goes side to side you don't get a this goes 360 degree swivel. You don't get any side to side motion because this is all just kind of top to bottom pegged solid stiff. You can compensate with your hips, you know, for the, your leans. And then it's designed to go front and back. If you have a McFarlane, you know the way these figures are designed. Because of the design, you get side to side motion. Let's see if we can put it back. It's really cooling off. Pray with me, people. Brr. I have the power. I don't have the power. I, I don't. I don't have the power. All right, but because of the way this is, you can get side to side. 
you get a crunch. Now it's not a whole lot of crunch. You can see it's moving slightly front, slightly back, but imagine that also with more motion from the lower part, you know, it all combines to give you a decent amount of rotation. If you want to get a little bit more rotation, be careful, but you may be able to sometimes shave a little bit of this away if you want a little bit more motion, but not too much because you don't want your ball peg to not fit securely in there. All right. And then lastly, the way the heads are done. Some heads are done like this. The molded head has a receiver similar to um, this torso. It goes in there and there's a ball peg up top and it's really tight. And then this one is a little bit bigger and this goes into the neck. And this is meant to give you um, two points of articulation. This moves up at the top of the head and it also will move at the base of the neck just to give you a little bit more. And then some figures uh, can peg down even further and give you extra neck motion. But that's pretty much it. That's the anatomy of this figure. I'm not gonna put it together because I'm out of hot water. But if you saw me take it apart, you can imagine how it goes back together. Who wants me? I know you guys want me to put it back together. But I'm not gonna put the whole thing back together. Or am I? No. Um, you can imagine that pops in there. What I will do for you, though, is I will show you how to assemble the joints. Because this is the... Everything else pops in. Your biggest uh, issue is going to be the knee joints that I scattered everywhere and the elbow joints. All right? So left, arrow up, insert it in there, okay? What you could do is you could heat this up for a little bit. Now, this isn't too complicated at all. Heat up the part that you need to be able uh, to be flexible. So feet, you want to heat. You don't want to heat your joints because you want this to be stiff. It's easier to put a nice, hard, stiff um, pin into a soft, gummy joint. Not that it would really move anyway. I can get that to accept it. All right, there we go. Use your imaginations, wish for it, it'll happen. Another thing is your your ball pegs don't go down. Your pegs don't go down anymore. A while ago to get ankle, it's called ankle rocker. It's how people refer to it as. To get this motion here, that side to side slash swivel, it's achieved by having your pegs go in at an angle. If they go forward towards the toes, then it's allowed to rotate around that axis, and that's what gives you those beautiful ankle rockers. Marvel Legends and Mezco do the same thing. This peg is coming in towards the toe. It's not going down. That's also why this is so um, flat down here. You know, It's flat down here because your peg is over here. It doesn't go down, and that allows for the rotation around this access point coming in that way. All right. Or what are we at? Now I got here, my, my left calf, my left boot, spooby to boop boop. Okay, that's how you would put those back together. All right, and remember, what's convenient about these is if this breaks, you can get a replacement for these. Um, you break off the peg like that to a Marvel Legend, uh, you're kind of boned. And I do like those more on the wrists. I like it on the wrists better because you get more articulation. This wrist, wrist can go forward, backward, 360 degree, all right? When you have pegs like this, or a wrist, let's use a wrist, you get your 360 degree. Now you can go up and down, all right? But if you can rotate it here, now you can go in and out. So it allows for this and this. It's a lot more motion out of the hand and the ankles much more expressive so i do like that on figures i've never tried to swap this out on a figure like this i'm sure it could be done if you just cut it there and drill a hole but i ain't gonna da -da -da. all right back at it um so heat that up a little bit had to run away so i'm gonna position this this is my right knee i want to use that i want to use my left knee i want to face it up properly i'm going to my left knee in there now because McFarlane pegs are so big this is nice and easy this can just this is just gonna slide through here 
for anyone who's never had to assemble it before. Not as hot as I'd like it to be, but I'd actually be better off heating the whole thing because these are so thick. This is gonna push right back into the knee. All the way through the joint. If this was hot, it would accept it much easier. Now you heard it click through the first part, through the second. Now for this, even if this was attached to the thigh, right? In this instance, I would just turn the figure to the side and maybe push it down. Right. And you can push the joint through, or you can use your flathead screwdriver, good for prying, good for pushing, and use the pressure from the broad side of the flathead to send your pins through. Okay? And I've actually pushed it way through. So I'm looking at it, and that's kind of looking at me all gangly, and that's really big. So it's making me think that this may be a pin. <laughs> Go figure. They're actually different sizes. That's how you put a pin through, but you're also gonna have to make sure it's the right size pin. <laughs> because you have two size pins. Apparently the uh, pin up on the upper part of the knee is thicker than the pin on the lower part. Um, but that's pretty much it. I'm not gonna sit here and we'll let you watch me take this out, but that's how it's done. So if I were to use the right size pin, which is this one, then I would put it in there and fight it all the way through and put it back. All right. And that's it. Pause, unpause, fully assembled Batman. Good as new. Just a little bit wetter. Um, but yeah, if I had to replace this hand, which I'll have to do if I want to do the wrist peg, I will have to uh, heat it up and take that out. Now for, again... For the small section, I could use a hair dryer if I want to do that spot, or I could boil some water and just dunk that hand in there, get it done. If I had something like a break somewhere, if something happened to break, I could replace it. Now, people think about kit bashing and swapping, and remember when we looked inside of Spawn and we looked inside of Batman, parts all aren't always compatible, though they may be close. I think the peg from the upper torso is a little bit longer on this guy than this guy. They don't always design figures to be um, one size fits all. You know, they are very similar in make and design. Certain things can be different. For the most part, everything's cut and dry easy. You did see that um, when I did put it together, these pegs are a little bit thicker than these pegs. So I, when I was reassembling it, I had to take it out and swap it back. But essentially, that's it. If you have to take your figure apart for any reason, say you want to customize and paint it, so you got to take it apart to sand the joints. Um, you want to do a kit bash. You want to do a swap. You want to put parts from that Batman on this Batman, this head on that body, this the torso on those legs, whatever. That's how you're going to get in there. Something breaks and you can get the replacement parts. Again, this is easy enough. If you can heat this up, the crotch is made of three pieces. If you, I don't know, if uh, say it broke, I had an extra spawn laying around. I could probably swap this crotch for this crotch. I would bet that they are very similar. Um in make i feel like this is a little bit softer rubber but i think the mechanism is going to work exactly the same because it looks exactly the same and it's just one two three pieces so thanks for tuning in for this long one appreciate it give the video a uh, smash the camera <laughs> give the video a like give it a thumbs up please comment and subscribe to the channel later